Hi there, I just wanted to do a quick video after I had a couple of uh, people ask about how they can merge their existing config and uh, maybe flight module into the FCU. So here I've just created some random uh, variables. So we've got uh, one uh, output, which is just a random LED, a button and an encoder. So if we assume that this uh, setup is your already existing Mobify config, how do we add or merge the um, FCU uh, and EFIS custom config into uh, an already existing setup. So say for example you have a Mobiflight Mega module which has the standard firmware on and you want to add our custom firmware but still use your existing um, config and setup. So let's assume that you have this uh, random uh, output and input as your already existing config. The first thing you need to do is go to the Mobiflight modules and here we can see we've just got a button, an encoder and an output. What we need to do is add in our custom firmware. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you follow the steps in the original video tutorial on how to flash our custom firmware to it. Um, once you have pushed our firmware onto the device it will overwrite the firmware that you've got on there. Um, your config will still be here and it will still look like this uh, except um, we haven't added our LCD data into it yet. So take your already existing Mega, overwrite the firmware on it with our custom firmware and follow the instructions in our previous video on how to do that. Once you've done that we need to come to here and we need to add in our two um, LCD custom displays. Now the one thing you have to bear in mind is you can't have any pin conflicts. So our FCU is pre the pre-programmed, uh, sorry, the pre-compiled firmware is using pins 8, 11 and 12. And for our FCU, uh, sorry, for our EFIS, we are going to be using pins 32, 33 and 34. If you have any uh, existing um, devices using either of those pins, you need to change them here. So if our button happened to be on pin 8, we need to use that for the FCU, so we need to change this. So make sure any of your existing um, devices don't have any pin conflicts. So you can't use pin 8, 11, 12, 32, 33. 34. If however you're only using the FCU you only need to have pins 8, 11 and 12 free. If you're only using the EFIS then you only need 32, 33, 34 but if you're using both um, then keep those pins clear. So those are the only pins that you can't use. If you have any conflicts change them here first. So we know we're using pins 2, 3, 4 and 5 in our existing setup. Uh, set All of those pins are free. We don't need to change any of those. So now we need to add in our custom uh, LCD device. The simplest way to do this um, is to take our existing uh, Mobiflight module config and just copy and paste into it, especially if yours is a lot longer than three devices, if you've got many here. The simplest thing to do is to make sure that we get this exactly right, is to just open up uh, a simple text editor. Um, but I would use VS Code, or but you can do this in just like normal uh, uh, Microsoft text editor. So what we can see here, I'm gonna open this up with code here. So here, this is the text version. Don't worry about, if you've never seen VS Code before, don't worry about what this looks like or anything. It's basically just a very fancy text editor. All we're interested in is this lump of text here. Now, this three lines here are the uh, button, encoder, and output. So we can see button, encoder, output, just on those three lines there. That's, this is our existing config. The simplest thing to do is to open up our 
uh, Moby Flight Mag. This is the uh, the custom LCD one here where we only have these two devices. So we can see LCD display and LCD display one. The simplest thing we can do is to simply copy these lines, take a new line here, just press return and paste them and save that config. That's the simplest way to do it because now if we cancel this, we, yes, we really want to continue. Yes, we want to cancel out of that. If we open up the Moby Flight modules, uh, oh no, we need to restart Moby Flight. So we've restarted Moby Flight. We can see if we open up the Moby Flight modules, there's still nothing there. But what we need to do is just literally refresh it by clicking open, click our already existing one that we've changed, click OK on that. And now we can see we've got LCD display one, uh, LCD display and LCD display one. If you don't want to mess around by doing anything in the text editor, then the simplest thing you can do is just by adding a device manually. So we're just going to add the device here and we're going to click LCD display. Now we can just change the settings that we need here. So this we can leave as 627, 16 and 2. And leave it as LCD display. Sorry, change that to one. And then we can just add another device, LCD display. Okay, so now that we've added our two LCD devices, we just need to change. Uh, we can leave this as uh, 0x27. This address column isn't actually going to be used, so we can just leave that there. We leave it at 16 columns and one line. And then LCD display one, we just need to change that address. I've just choose two zero. And then we just do 16 and 2. Uh, and then we can save that as a config. So we just click Save. We want to keep that to our already existing one. Here is here, but we need to upload that to uh, the board. And that's finished. So now that is on the Mega, and we can just click OK. So now if we open up modules, so there we have our three original devices and our two new LCD displays. So just to summarize that, we've got our already existing config here. We have following the steps in our previous video, pushed the new firmware to the board. We've overwritten um, our, the, the standard Moby Flight firmware with our custom firmware. Then we've gone to Moby Flight modules, uh, we've left our existing ones as they are and checked that there's no pin conflicts on any of those. And then we've added our two extra custom LCD displays via either simple editing of the text editor by taking the one from the GitHub, copying these two lines and just pasting them in here. We can see um, they're in there. Or we've done it manually by adding it in here uh, and making sure we've got 16 and 1 and 16 and 2 uh, and the two different addresses. So you can see in the hex they translate to 39 and 32, which is exactly what we had there. 16 and 1, 16 and 2. Now we've then uploaded that config to our board. So we've literally pushed our already existing devices there on top of our two LCD displays. So now we have a Moby Flight module config with your already existing setup and our two new custom LCD displays. Now, if you're only using the FCU, you only need to put this one in. And if you're only using the EFIS, you only need to put this one in. If you're using both, obviously put both in. Um, if you don't put the EFIS in, then you can continue to use pins 32, 33, and 34. If you don't put the FCU in, then you can continue to use pins 8, 11, and 12. Once you upload the config with these devices on it's only then when those pins become uh, unusable so if you don't push uh, LCD display 1 with 16 and 2 then you can still use uh, 32 33 34 um, hopefully that makes sense but if you have both of these devices pushed to the config even if they're not plugged in you won't be able to use those pins so we've now got our config on, but obviously we don't have any of the, um, the actual Moby Flight config details here. Now here's the easiest bit, thanks to them having this lovely merge option here. So we're just going to click merge. Now we want to merge in our 
one from GitHub into our merge example. So here, this is our already existing uh, output and input configs. We've got uh, test row one, two, and three. And you can imagine this may be uh, much longer um, for your already existing ones. So we can just click merge, add the one from GitHub, which is this standard one here. We click open. We keep test row one, two, and three. But now we've also added in all of the required uh, configurations for the FCU, which is LCD display, and the EFIS, which is LCD display one. And then we can literally simply save that. And that is it, that is done. We have your already existing setup now merged with our custom setup uh, for both the Moby flight configuration. Um, the Obviously the FCU and the EFIS don't have any input, they're just reading, so you're only going to see a change in the output configs. Your inputs should stay exactly the same. And then our Moby flight modules have our already existing devices plus our new FCU and EFIS. Uh, and that is it. Once that runs, that should be perfectly ready to go. I hope that makes sense. If there are any problems or any questions, please do drop me a message. But it's a relatively simple process, a little bit of copy and pasting, or if you're not happy with that, um, just a little bit of manual configuration in here. But I said, if you don't want to use VS Code, you can literally just use a standard text editor. So if I, for example, open up our merge example with Notepad, here we can see it's being done in, open it up with Notepad. Here we can see it looks exactly the same, it's just a normal text editor, but here you just have to be a little bit more careful with the spacing. So for example, you don't want it looking like that because that could cause some problems. You need to make sure the spacing is aligned, which is why I prefer using the VS Code because you'll get that, uh, one of those things to, to worry about there. But if you really are uncomfortable, you can use a standard text editor to do that. Don't want to save that. Uh, but yeah, that is it. Hopefully that uh, enables you to merge uh, your already existing uh, configs and setups with our custom firmware. And as I said, you can then continue to add further outputs and inputs as long as they're not conflicting with any of the pins which we're using, which is 8, 11 and 12, 32, 33, 34. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.